to more of Morning Taste on 93.7 The Ticket. Welcome back in. It is 741 here. Morning take, 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. I'm Lanny Holstein. He is Josh Harvey of Big Red Report filling in today for Jake Sorensen. Thanks for tuning us in here on your drive to work, wherever you may be. Josh, wanted to get to this topic. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before the show. Alabama, best team in football right now has 24 football analysts slash player personnel. Those are the two titles that these these uh, assistants are given on their football staff uh, that are that are non-coaches. So you get, you know, your head coach, your nine assistant coaches, and you get, you know, up to four GAs who can who can look at film and do that kind of recruiting stuff for you. Uh, but these football analysts can help you with film. They can player personnel people as well. They can help you with uh, help you with film. They can break things down for you. They can uh, just make your life a little bit easier. Uh, and and here's the deal: Nebraska doesn't have any of these people. Nebraska has zero, you know, outside of the head coach, the assistants, and the GAs. Doesn't have no, any extra football people. That's not true. That's not true. I mean, there's guys like Mike Nobler who's in video. They have they have Aaron Curry who's in in recruiting. I mean, so no, I mean they don't have 24. But they do have other guys who are helping them out in other areas. Okay, of but they, but they don't have okay. They, they don't have twenty four. But you, you got like guys like Aaron Curry over there who's in the recruiting offices, uh, or or an Austin Everson who's in the recruiting offices. So there are other guys. There's just nowhere near twenty four. Okay, my my fault. I missed. No, both. no, you're fine. Uh, but okay, so Nebraska doesn't have as many people doing this kind of stuff. Um, and. I mean, the thing with these these assistants can do is they can help you out with they can break down video, they can make life easier, they can kind of have help you cast a wider net as far as recruiting goes because you can you can look at more more film efficiently. They can they can yep. cut things up, they can highlight players for you. Um, according to NCAA rules, these extra assistants are not allowed to help in the evaluation process of of recruits, so they're not allowed to actually you know, I guess give advice like and then look at film and actually analyze it themselves. Now, are they doing that? I would venture I would to think say so. that, and it's not just Bama. There's a lot of schools that I would venture to say that that's going on. At. So, I mean, here's my question: Do you think they should Nebraska should hire more of these people? I mean, do you think that they should expand their recruiting efforts in that area? Uh, you know, if if I don't know, I I don't I think 24 people, uh, and I know all 24 aren't just doing recruiting analyst work, but I just feel like that that is way 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 over. And I have no idea what Saban has those guys doing full time every week. Uh, it just kind of blows my mind because uh, I've been around enough athletic offices to know that there's not enough work to be done for with 24 more other people, uh, unless that they're just totally doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't see the benefits of that. Both said at Big Ten Media Days uh, that. That there's there's not going to be any effort for Nebraska anytime soon to move towards this. That uh, he also said that it's I mean as we spoke about before, it's more of an athletic department decision yep. more than his decision. Yeah. It wouldn't be him just saying yeah we're going to hire these people. Yeah. He'd have to you know it'd be, it'd be an athletic department because obviously it's it'd be some money that they'd have yep. to pay these people. Yep. Uh, and if we're talking about 24 individuals, that's that's quite a bit of money uh, coming out of the athletic department. Uh, I don't know. My, my, it just kind of brings up to me. My question is. I mean, is, is Nebraska doing all that they can in recruiting? Because and, and you think it wouldn't help them out all that much. Like they wouldn't be able to do much more with it. But I mean, uh, how how so though? I mean, like if, if they could look at more players, if they could identifying cast a wider I, net, identifying the talent isn't isn't the issue at Nebraska. I don't I don't think I don't think Nebraska's just. It, it's not like Alabama is using these guys to find the hidden gems of the world. That's not that's or the diamonds in the rough. That's not the case. I mean. Pretty much the schools know the top 500 players in the country, you know, year in and year out. Um, the the guys don't really just go unnoticed, and so that's what I'm kind of confused on what Alabama's using these guys completely for. Um, I know that you know Saban was quoted about you know one of these guys will be able to you know put all the plays of this certain player on tape, and I can know you know it makes my job more efficient. Yeah, you know maybe maybe Nebraska you know can make 
the coaches' lives a little more efficient, but there's nowhere, nowhere do they need 24 guys. And what I would love to see Alabama do is literally put out something where it says, okay, you know, because they have all these football analysts on their staff that they're labeled as analysts. I would like to know what each guy does and how many hours he does it because I just cannot believe that they, I think it's gone way overboard. And to back up uh, your point, and, and as well as some of these schools that don't do quite as much, like like a Nebraska or like a Northwestern, because Pat Fitzgerald is quoted as saying this. He says, uh, if you look at our history in recruiting, we're typically a day late, a week late, a month late, and potentially offering a young person. And I know it sometimes frustrates our fans, but we're going to make sure we offer a young man that you know we, we know he's someone we want to be part of our football family. And you know we maybe it takes a little bit longer to evaluate guys like that. Uh, and you know, you know, and and maybe you don't need quite as many guys. You want to actually make the decision yourself with one of your, yep. you know, inner circle type guys. You don't want these, you know, I don't know, guys that you don't know quite as much about. Because here's the thing, Nebraska, Nebraska, the way they do their offers is completely different than a lot of people. And I don't know how many more people would really help the process because what it is is if a guy finds a guy in his region, the position coach has got to sign off on it, and then he takes it to the coordinator. And so, like John Papuchas has to sign off on a linebacker. And if both of the linebacker, like Els and Papucha, sign off on it, then they have to take it to Pelini. And so, and if Pelini likes them, then they get an offer. So a lot of Husker fans get frustrated because it seems like Nebraska sometimes is a day late. But it's also because it's going through the chain of command where at other schools, you know, maybe an assistant can offer whoever he wants. Um, so that's another reason why I don't know. You know, they're still going to have to see just as many guys. I don't know if that helps Nebraska, you know, get any more quicker. Mentioned earlier in the show, but uh, Abu Lamin, the uh, defensive tackle recruit, commits to South Carolina yesterday. He's a four-star guy, six foot five, three hundred fifteen pounder. Had visited Nebraska over the weekend, so maybe uh, you know got a little bit of uh, Nebraska fans rile up about him. He said he visited. He said he uh, rated his visit to Nebraska at ten, so he liked what he saw here, but not enough to take it over South Carolina. He's a junior college guy at uh, Fort Scott Community College in uh, Kansas, but uh, he was from what you North Carolina? Yeah, he's originally from North, North Carolina. Okay. So, I mean, he's getting fairly close to home, uh getting to play in a in a conference that I'm sure he got to see a lot of when he was growing up and so it really wasn't that surprising. Wanted to talk about this. We got into this a little bit earlier in the show, but uh an article, a great article by Dirk Chatlin yesterday, Mad Chatter. Check it out on uh, Omaha.com or uh, the World Herald. Uh, why doesn't Nebraska have athletic dorms? And, and I, I know there's a rule against having just 100% athletic dorms, having all athletes grouped in the same dorm. But uh, University of Oklahoma is building a $75 million complex called Headington Hall, which is going to be 49% athletes. And they're going to group the athletes together on, on separate floors and uh, just, you know, it's going to be really fancy. They're going to have a bunch of plasma TVs just set up for them in this thing. Uh, there's there's a, a pool, a hot tub. Um, I think I think it said there's a convenience store as well in the in the, the building, which Nebraska has the convenience stores in some of its dorms as well. Um, but I just think this is this is a great idea. I've ne- I really haven't hadn't occurred to me before that you could do this. But we talk about athletes being wooed by facilities, by, you know, atmosphere, stadiums, whatever. Um, and just... An easy way Nebraska could pump some money into something is building building a really nice facility that you would house a lot of athletes in. And I think that, that Oklahoma's doing this, Alabama's doing this, and it looks like, uh, now the more that I look at, maybe a lot of other programs have this kind of uh, uh, some, setup. Yeah, something similar where they have maybe all their athletes in kind of one centralized location, and maybe their dorm rooms are a little nicer than, than, the, average. than the average dorms. Yeah, right. But you were saying that Nebraska right now they just have. I mean, you guys, you have had guys on your floor. Uh, sure. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I remember my freshman year. I lived on uh, the tenth floor of of uh, Shram Hall, and it, which is just one of the normal traditional dorms. I mean, you get yep. your little cubicle room, and you have bunk beds on either side, and uh, you share a little desk in the middle. And it's just a it's a small little. I mean, you have a cement floor. It's it's yeah. nothing fancy. Yep. And yeah, I mean, I had we had multiple. I think we had about three or four football players and one wrestler on okay. our, on our floor my freshman year, and then. I moved into my sophomore year. Moved into the uh, the village, which is the apartment style yep. dorms, which is a little bit nicer. You know, you get a little carpeting, you get a couch in there, uh, you get your own little separate rooms and a little miniature kitchen. So it's a little nicer. Uh, but but it isn't. It is not what this stuff's talking yeah. about. It's not not super. I mean, luxurious. And I remember we had some athletes living in there as well. But they were just. I mean, they were just mixed in. I mean, I, yeah. I remember I had friends who had roommates 
that were athletes. Yeah. And you said you had, yeah, you, my freshman year, I was a, I was roomed with a football player. Um, and you know, I, I liked it because I, I wasn't playing sports, but I was, uh, there, but you know, it was cool to be still part of the sports scene. Um, and then actually my sophomore year, I was an RA and I had a all athletes floor for as an RA. So I had baseball players, football players, and hockey players uh, on my floor. And it was literally, I think there was only one other person that was not an athlete and everybody else was. So even my, my small college um, kind of separated their athletes the best they could. I don't know if the separation in the grouping is that big of a deal as far as recruiting. Like, I don't know if, if I would come to a school or not go to a school because yeah. of that. But the, but the niceness but of the nicety. Yeah. I think yep. that's what you could really, you could, you could, I mean, you could, you make separate floors for the athletes, which like you said, maybe you, you know, the rooms are a little nicer, a little bigger, a little, little bit wider. You, yeah. You put some, put some, you know, things in, you furnish it for them or you, yeah. I mean, you make it a little nicer because I mean, we all know the athlete, the, the athletes are already getting treated nicer than that average students anyway. I just think it, you could carry it over to the, uh, to, to the living situation. They already have a separate cafeteria. What else do they need? <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's like, it's the, it's, I don't know. It's almost the pay for play argument. It's like, you know, they're already getting scholarships. They're already getting special yeah. food. They're already getting this and that and that. They don't need any more money. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. But if you're, if you're recruiting, you're trying to yeah. get players to it come. It wouldn't hurt. It, it wouldn't hurt. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how many more people they would get, but it wouldn't hurt. Uh, so I don't know. Al, Al, Oklahoma is building a seventy-five million dollar facility, and it's funded all by the athletic department. The athletic department's going to run it, but there is an NCAA rule that fifty-one percent of Which the kids sense. have to be regular students. Yeah. in the hall. I mean, Which does make, it? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, because next we're going to have athletic, you know, departments putting ATMs in the bottom of the bottom of the 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 first floor that doesn't require a debit card they just come by and they <laughs> punch a code and oh you can't spits do out that a i'm just saying it makes sense if you, you put an atm that I'm you not, spit cash out i'm just you would lose so uh, much yeah. money i'm just saying that uh i'm saying you have to you have to at least attempt to say oh it's not that special let me know we'll when the atms have a, are being put in because i'll be i'll be first in line for that <laughs> SEC. That's all I'm just, saying. Just, just money's just spitting out. These guys are just sitting down there like at a casino. Like, I won, I won. Just rolling like hundreds out of an ATM. That sounds good. 